Hold on to your butts. These are the Squashbuckler Diaries. Welcome back. My name is Guy Hassan, and you are listening to the Squash Buckler Diaries podcast, the only podcast to use the word squash buckling in its name, <laughs> or even at all, <laughs> mainly because that word doesn't exist. I, I, I'll tell you what, though. I think I've beaten the Google, uh, the Google AI because as I was writing squash buckling and I misspelled it, it auto corrected me. Well, it, it suggested an autocorrection to squash buckling. I have taught the Google AI thing inside the Google Docs. So the English language is richer now, you see. You know, Stan Lee said that you always need to do an introduction. You always need to somehow explain where things are because it's always someone's first comic book. So make, this is... Even though this is a daily thing, it's always someone's first podcast. So I'll give you a little bit of a background, then get into it. So, Joy Shelley is the girl who lives in dreams. She lives in her father's dreams. And he is. they have a life of adventure, because that's what he dreams about. They have a swashbuckling life, which uh, she calls squashbuckling. And that's a whole thing, and you can look it up. And uh, in previous episodes and upcoming episodes... And when he disappears, he wakes up. And she spends all that time by herself. But sometimes, every so often, he stays long enough to finish the adventure and to tuck her uh, to sleep. Uh, season one is about ages two to six. We're going to cover entire life from birth to death. So we are now talking about something that happens for the first time ever in her life because... It usually doesn't happen in a dream. So let's get into it. Episode 85, The Gruffalo. Joy's age four, told by the Red Dragon. Tonight, I think I'll read you a story, Dragonfather said. Dragonfather and Dragon Little had finished a two-day adventure battling villains, then imprisoning them in the infinite corridor in the belly of Bunny's revenge. Dragonfather had not yet disappeared, so he had time to put Dragon Little in bed and talk to her a bit. Through the small window of her cabin, from my vantage point, I could see that he was now holding a book in his hands as he was sitting on her cot. Of all the dreams I have seen, I have not seen many books. In Dragonfather's dreams, I have never seen a book. What's that? Dragon Little, now four years old, pointed at the book. It's a book. It's a kid's book, he said simply. Have I never read you a... He froze in place, shook his head suddenly, then snapped out of it. Anyway, it's a great book. Kids love it. I'll read it to you, okay? There was silence. I could not see, but I suppose Dragon Little nodded. Dragon Father opened the book. He looked at it, but for some reason could not read it. What's going on, he said to himself. He turned a page. My sharp dragon eyes could see from high above. The writing was foggy. He moved the book closer to his eyes and further from his eyes. Why can't I see what it says? He tried again, and then put it aside near Dragon Little. I guess no story today. Something's wrong with the book. Dragon Little took the book in her hand. It glowed for just a split second. Knowing them, I know they did not notice. She then gave it back to her father. Try again. Come on. Dragon Father sighed, opened the book again, and was taken aback. Oh, I can see the words now. Nice. Okay, ready? Dragon Lil turned around to lie on her side. Ready. A mouse took a stroll in the deep, dark wood, he began. And that is how Dragon Lil heard her first story at age four, told by the Red Dragon. Hashtags Joy, Justin, reading The Graffalo. So, well, there are things I could mention, and there are things I won't mention, and there are things I could explain, and there are things I won't explain. I'll just talk about why I couldn't read the book. Think about it. When you dream, 
it's really hard to read a book. I don't, I, you know, have you ever done it? Do you know if you're able to do it? To actually read while you're asleep? Um, so that's why he couldn't read the book, even though he knew the book. The question is, why could he read the book after she touched it? And after it glowed and they didn't notice? And what what is that all about? Well, like I say, most everything, almost everything in this is some kind of Easter egg about stuff that we'll see later. You know, most of the stuff you'll never know is an Easter egg. Um, I don't want to give examples because that would destroy them. But we're talking about the childhood. We're covering the childhood of uh, Joy that we will get to know much, much better when she's a heroine at 15 and 18 and 21 and so on. Yeah, we, we'll get to know her life really well. And she'll be a hero much before that. But I suppose that's when you guess she'll be a heroine. And hopefully she'll live longer and she'll be a heroine after that too. But stuff that happens in our childhood, whether we, whether we remember it or not, influences who we become and who we are. Sometimes we remember it, sometimes we don't. But so many things that we talk about in this first series is going to come back later in one way or another, and sometimes in more than one way. But sometimes the Easter eggs are just in plain sight. You know, I'm just telling you, hey, look at this, look at this. This is strange, isn't it? What do you think this is about? And I'm not going to tell you now. You will just have to wait and see. Well, we got to experience something from our world for a change. Not an adventure, not a swashbuckling adventure, not demons, not robots, not uh, and so on and so on, not witches, not witches. But next time, we'll also get to experience something new called the Double Decker Bus. See you then. The Squashbuckler Diaries are written and read by me, Guy Hassan. All the tags mentioned in this story are searchable at the website. You can find all the stories there in written form and, in fact, 150 Squashbuckler Diaries more. The Squashbuckler Diaries is the diary of Joy Shelley, the girl who lives in dreams. She'll be called the Forgotten Girl by her father. She'll be a true heroine. She'll change the world. This project shows her entire life from birth to death. Check out the website at guyhasson.com, that's G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N.com. I've been an author and playwright for more than 30 years, and this is the first time I've used the guyhasson.com website, because The Girl in the Dream is my life project. If you have questions, if you want to comment, please do. You can comment at the website or email me at guyhasson at gmail.com, that's G U Y. H A S O N G U Y H A S S O N at gmail dot com. The theme music is called Brass Gentleman and is created by Thomas Harudek. My name is Guy Hassan and this is my life project. Come back tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow for more. <laughs> Thank you.